You guys find yourselves standing on the inside of this structure, the other side of the door. As you look around you, the walls seem to be shimmering and glowing. They are both there and not, and they are shifting and reshaping themselves. Sometimes there is what appears to be a door, sometimes there is not. Sometimes it's just a solid wall. You look up and around, see pearlescent rainbows coming from the wall, made of a very foreign material. And a moment later, you hear a resounding thud behind you. The door slams itself shut. Leaving you standing in this entryway. The place seems to be quite quiet. Can't really hear much. Kinda like if you look at Critter's camera, that's what it looks like. You're phasing kinda in and out. I'm noticing that. <laughs> I love oh. it when people actually demonstrate. <laughs> not doing it on purpose. I know you're not. I'm just there's a lot going on behind me today, so I kind of have to put this on. You're good. I'm just picking. So that's where you find yourselves at the moment. Well, I am going to keep my eyes open, my ears open, and my nose open, but not my mouth. And I'm just going to have a general look out for anything that's threatening? There doesn't appear to be anything threatening. Cool. Anyone else? Uh, I'm I'm just... so go ahead. I'm still trying to log in. Uh, Alardis is gonna uh, sit there and oh now the perception check goes yeah. and start realizing that he can see smell and hear everything way better than he used to and he's trying not to freak out over it roll me um Give me a perception check. I'm assuming me? Yes. Twenty-two. There is one thing that stands out for you. Either Vincent has farted, or it's been a really long time since he's taken a shower. Hey Vincent, I got a question for you. Yes. When did you last bathe? Uh, that would have been the last time we had a night stay at an inn. We haven't really run into any much running water on this outing. The last bit of water we saw was frozen. As you speak... I can't exactly bathe with a block of ice. As you speak up, Vincent, hear the trickling of water. Coming from somewhere down the hall. All right, there's some. Maybe I can bathe in that. I'll walk towards the water. Sound. Doesn't take you long. Turns out it's a door on your right hand side. Opens up into a rather magnificent bathroom, effectively. Giant tub in the middle. And there is steaming water coming from it. Complete with soapy bubbles. Like, uh. Are we talking like, uh modern kind of bathroom or like yep. uh i'll kind of look over and say guys 
Shit's not right. <laughs> Wonder what would happen if we said we were really, really hungry. As you watch, the bathroom shifts into a rather large dining room with a giant oak table in the center. Top of this table, piles and piles of food and drink. So, um, I'm going to keep going with this action because it makes it even more hilarious now. So, between the time that Vincent said, oh, look, there's water and a bath, and, and, and Yuki said, said, food, Pig had already started running towards the pool to make a dive into it. Hey, no, that's shit. not bath water, that's soup. So what would you like me to do? Roll me a dexterity check, please. Oh, if this goes bad, I am so sorry. Waiter, there's a brownie in my soup. <laughs> I a the two. desserts will come after. You rolled a two? Oh, wait, wait. Is she <laughs> the Talk about having a hair in your soup? Meh. <laughs> So, you run and go to jump in this bath. This, like, pool-sized bath. Only for it to switch a moment later. The rest of you see a giant tower of donuts start to fall over. And a brownie head poking up top. Jenga! Well, okay. I'm not bathing in donuts. The moment you say bathing, Pig suddenly finds herself in the tub. With a donut in her mouth. <laughs> With a bar of soap in her mouth. It's not a donut, it's a bar of soap. <laughs> Will you guys make up your fucking mind? Okay, how about we have the bath room first and then deal with our empty stomach? Sound good? Sounds good. What's A up? Giant bowl of stoop. This is not the kind of meat we want to flavor our soup with, Vincent. Egg finds herself. The middle of a giant bowl of French onion soup. At least it wasn't chowder. <laughs> now it is. Chowder! Say it right! <laughs> you hear a little bath! Change it into a bath! bath! And you find Lots yourself. Of coffee. Bath time! Vincent, I swear to God, I'm gonna butt you. <laughs> you see the bathtub? Now it's filled with coffee. As, almost as if the room can't make up its mind. Room, we would like to get clean. Can we please have a bath? And the coffee turns into the bubbly water once again. You guys are fucked up. <laughs> He's just gonna swim Welcome in the circles. circles. Welcome to the debauchery tea party. He's just gonna swim in circles? Do so you find- yeah, you're swimming in this tub. Not a problem. The water's actually quite warm. Bubbles the size of, well, you. So, does awesome. anything- you guys hear a wet plop? And you see Higgs clothes just launch across the room. <laughs> Does anything seem off about this room? I mean, insight check. Insight? Yep. While that's happening, Alardis is already in, and he's, like, uh, trying to scrub down uh, in Kiba, but Kiba is, like, pretty much having none of it. You know, typical 
dog that doesn't like baths. Yep. Mm. Ten. And suddenly the room is filled with wet dog smell. Somebody pushed Vincent in the tub. It was me. Uh, uh ten? Uh, so... There doesn't seem anything overly wrong with this room. Just, again, the walls are kind of phasing in and out. You can't really focus on them. <laughs> hey, Vincent! Pig's gonna dive and moon him from the water. Vincent doesn't come back up. Well, I wasn't serious about somebody actually having pushed Vincent in the <laughs> tub. One sec. I've spilled energy drink all down my arm. Oh, no! There we go. Vincent will just say, didn't need to see that. If your arm starts vibrating, we know why. High energy arm, let's go! <laughs> mm -hmm. So, Vincent says, I didn't need to see that. The rest of you are now standing around this giant tub. I'm gonna jump in the tub too. Yep, stripping down, jumping in. Nico, who is now decidedly Red Panda. Yep. Again, the giant fear bulb seems to have disappeared, left by the Red Panda body. Which we still need to change that over in my character. Yeah, seat. for right now we're gonna we're gonna um, for right now we're gonna call it a cosmetic thing. Yep. I I imagine it just like Nico undoing a zipper and then tiny panda Nico just steps out. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it was just two tiny red pandas in a fur bulk suit this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Three goblins in a trench coat. Yeah. So Vincent is going to be like, can I get a tub to myself? Nothing happens. Aha! See? You're stuck with us. Those who fight together, bathe together. And she's going to throw soap in his way. <laughs> okay. Steps in the tub. Dirt starts washing off of Vincent. Lots of it. And sand. You have sand falling out of cracks you didn't know you had. What is turning dark? I'm going to swim very far away from Vincent. Who wants to play Marco Polo with me? Sure, but let's do it away from Vincent because that should be nasty. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, Alertis literally is at the other corner with Kiba, and all you hear is, God damn it, Kiba, hold still for a minute, and you, you just hear the occasional, uh, like, water uh. flying from wet fur. <laughs> Floor is yours, guys. Marco. Hello. This is just washing. <laughs> Only, um... Sight? Wisdom? One of the two. For our Marco Polo game? No, Vincent. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, 23. What? There seems to be more sand and dirt coming off of you than you thought actually possible. Huh. Neat. Matter of fact, look at yourself and as you pull your arm out of the water, it's just as dirty as when it went in. Hey guys, I'm start clean? Hey guys, they're starting to think that we're not actually in a tub. Hmm. But the water's so warm and nice and I'd say clean, but you've been in here. I'm gonna step out of the tub. Am I still dry? Yes. Yeah. No, I'm still dry and naked. Cool, put some so, pants on, will ya? 
an insight oh, check yeah. of uh, 26. Or? The tub situation. It's and a the very, very heavily crafted illusion spell. All right. So I'm going to press the digitation a little cloud in front of Vincent's junk so we don't have to see that. It's going to have to be a pretty damn big cloud. You know, fine, fine. Size does not matter in this case. You're getting a cloud in front of your junk so we don't mm-hmm. have to see that. Meanwhile, Vincent disappears in the cloud. Just the head sticking out. The big head, I mean. The one with the beard. Hey, we'll let out at this point. I mean, you know, you're you're not helping with description here, Vincent. <laughs> the wrinkly one. You're not helping he's with old. description here, Vincent. <laughs> yeah, the one. He's got the turtleneck sweater on. He's got. Come on, do a little hike, helicopter swing for us. <laughs> There's not enough room from floor to ceiling. God damn it. Cloud, you're currently my best friend. <laughs> Upon figuring out that this is all an illusion, he yep. will disappointedly exit the water. Yep. And just kind of mope on to back to her <laughs> obviously <laughs> still dry clothes. Yep. <laughs> is so, she going to tell everybody else it's an illusion? Pardon? Hey guys, it's an illusion. Okay. (laughs) There's no actual water here. I'm still dirty. Oh man, we can't play Marco Polo anymore. Just a dirty, dirty old man. Yep. (laughs) Hey Lara, to see what we're going to say? I was going to look over at Kiba. Hear this realize, oh, I'm practically giving my poor wolf a dirt bath and he's like buddy, is this why you're not my this? Usually you're fine with it and just suddenly it goes from him shaking water off to sand and dirt. Eventually, you guys find yourselves back out into the hall in in the hallway. Appears to be a door at the end. The door to the left as well. And then there's back the way you came, an otherwise empty hallway. What's up, Vincent? No, I was just going to ask if there are any other doors. Yeah. Yeah, there's one to the left, and there's one at the end of the hallway, and then there's one back the way you guys came. What's in the left door? You open the left door, and it appears to be almost kind of looking like a giant bedroom or study. You're not sure. It keeps fl- flickering back and forth between the two. Appears to be, uh, when it's a a study. Bookshelves kind of line the walls. There's a desk in the center. And there's an old man sitting at the desk. Appears to be writing something. Hey, old guy. No answer. I'll yell louder. Same thing. Hey, old guy. No answer. Um. Uh, inside our arcana to figure out what this is and how to get out of it. That. Arcana is not going to work for that. So, insight? <laughs> You know what? We're going to have to go with insight because I got nothing else to stick this under. 
Okay, in that case, that will be 28. 28? I rolled a 19. Oh shit, thank you. 28. You're not sure. But there is a sneaking suspicion that this entire place might be a frozen moment in time. Or a frozen couple of moments in time. I rolled a 19 on perception because when I ended up uh, taking kind of a deep breath in and then I was wondering if I could like smell anything that normally I wouldn't. Not overly. I'm pretty sure we're stuck in some sort of fun house of memories, guys. I don't think we should venture venture apart too too much. Yeah, probably a good idea. Okay. Stick together. Sounds good. So what are you guys doing? Following my nose for a breeze. Hold on, my die roll on the floor. Yeah. What was that, Alardis? Alardis is going to look over at Nico and just be like, when the hell did you get that so tiny? When we talked to the goddess. They let me get back to my, my panda form. Huh. So you were never a furbolg to begin with, then? No. Huh. Eh, I'm okay with it. That explains a lot. Mm-hmm. Isn't he adorable, though, guys? I don't know. I met a lot of furbolg, and they're usually not so sweet. Been putting his pants back on. Now you're putting your pants back on? Yeah. That cloud followed him the entire time, staying specifically where it was. <laughs> One moment. Nice. Uh, Perception to feel if there's a particular directional breeze. There is not. Or smell. There is not. Okay. Then I should open the other door. The one at the end of the hallway? Yeah. I just open it. I don't go in it. <laughs> Can I even reach the doorknob? How tall are you? Two foot fuck off. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should be able to, yeah. Okay. It's kind of high for you. You gotta reach up a little bit and grab it, but... Tippy toes, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can grab it. You turn the uh, the doorknob, open the door, and you look inside. Seems to be a room. Is this hmm. like there's no furniture at all? No furniture, it's just a giant stone room. The room is stoned. Awesome. I'm gonna check the other door. Not go in, just open it up and see what's in there. You mean the one Vincent opened? Yeah, that's the study with the old guy. Sorry, I must have missed that he opened it. (laughs) For those of you that are paying close enough attention, uh-huh. the old guy's pen actually seems to be like a. It seems to be a scribbling something. His hand's kind of guiding it. I'm gonna have a peek at what he's writing. He's writing the same word over and over again. What word? Four. Before? Mm hmm. Out loud, I'm going to make before what? Just keep threading the same word over and over. 
Is there anything else that's been written down? Nope. Seems like he's only he just start. It? it seems like he's only just starting to write whatever he's trying to write. Hmm. Is there anything familiar about the old guy? Pardon? Is there anything familiar about the old guy? There seems to be, but you can't quite place it. Would that be perception check or? Uh, you, you, can, you can do a perception check if you want. See if I can place that, place his yeah. face. You can do a perception check if you want. More than welcome to. I'll never stop you from rolling dice. Twenty-four. There yeah, seems 20. to be there seems to be something familiar about the guy, but you can't quite place it. Is it Grimlock? Pardon? Is it Grimlock? Nope. I rolled a history check of a 12. And there's something familiar. Can't quite place it. Can I support that history check with a 19? You can. You don't discover anything else. Just that he's vaguely familiar. Just that he is vaguely familiar. In fact, this whole room seems vaguely familiar. But you can't quite place it. When he's writing, like, is he actually making progress on the page? Or does no. it seem like he's not actually moving down the page at all? Like he's just... not moving down the page. He's literally just writing the word before. The pen's scribbling. You can see him writing the word. Just when he gets, when he starts to move Onward, he's suddenly writing the word before again. It, it's basically a loop. For what I have in mind, that is the best I can describe it with the language that we have. Okay. He's like, all, feeling that he's like always hard. writing in the same spot, but caught in a loop. But he's always writing in the same spot, if you, that makes sense. Makes sense to me. That's actually what I ended up... Uh, picturing too, basically <laughs> writing it down and then boop, and writing it down again. Boop. But yeah, somehow he's the word disappearing and then reappearing as he writes. Nope. So he's essentially making like really dark marks on the paper as he goes. He's it, so the pen's not held in the same spot, right? He's constantly writing this word, but it's like he's caught in the same spot or the same word, but not at the same time. Would you roll for a perception check, uh, Vincent? My perception? Uh, the last one that you rolled. 24. There is something about the room that catches your eye. Not about this guy, but about the room. It's up above the door. It's up above the door that you entered, actually, as he walked over to his desk. Look a look. The giant picture, giant picture frame. An hourglass in it. Is there anything above the door frame with the empty room? With the what? The frame with the the, the door with the empty room. The, is there anything above that one? Nope. Like there is with the hourglass? And what nope. about the one with the bathroom, dining room, bathroom? Nope. Can I try to move the, the book that he's writing in from, like, underneath the pen and see what happens? You can try. Your hand passes through it. Hmm. Is the hourglass actually, like, dripping sand like it normally would? The hourglass is a symbol on the door. It's a symbol? Or, it's no. like a painting above the door? Okay, so not an actual hourglass. The hourglass in the painting, however, appears to be dripping sand. But no sand appears to be moving from the top to the bottom. Again, it's caught a, in the loop. It's a, a, it's a, con, a constant stream of moving sand, but nothing is changing. Okay. Trying to figure out why that's familiar to me. And that's when the pen stops. Just a moment. It starts up again. 
Except this time, instead of the word before, the old man seems to be writing the word help. Oh, help how? Nothing changes. Is the door or the painting magical? I'm asking, I'm asking everybody else in this room. Uh, I will detect magic on the painting. So when your cleric regains her eyesight, dot dot dot. So the painting is very magical then. No, this entire area is somewhat magic. Everything yeah. here is an enchantment of some kind. <laughs> the answer to, is there anything here that's enchanted, is yes. Okay, so I'm still going to detect magic, but I'm going to see if there is something that isn't specifically lighting up. The old... Kind of like Uno reverse the room. The old man. So the entire room is magic, but this old guy who can't really do fuck all isn't. So Correct. somebody trapped in a time loop. What happens if Hague touches him? Is he solid or no, no he's his... he's solid. You touch him. Moment. His eyes shift and look down at the brownie and then back up to where he Uh, does a 19 arcana tell me anything about what's going on? Nope. Given the new information? Nope. nope. Sorry, I'm not giving this to you guys. <laughs> You're going to have to figure it out. Alardis walks into the room and he's already got a, uh, or his uh, bow out and he's got an arrow knocked and ready. And not even looking at the painting just yet. He looks at the uh, old man for a brief moment. And he goes, You know what's great about enchantments? And that's when he uh, like, turns around, aims the arrow directly at the painting. And he says, All enchantments can be broken. And he lets go of the arrow. The moment your arrow hits the painting, it freezes. Like, like, like stuck in it or like right as it's about to as it's it. about to hit, it freezes midair. What happens if Hig tries to grab the arrow to like give it the last push? The arrow tried to pull a pole of rebar out of a out of like a concrete pillar. That's what it feels like. Hey, Vincent. <laughs> I'll give it a pull. Same or thing. Push. Same thing. Feels like rebar stuck in cement. Strength check. I'm going to try and push it as hard as I can into the painting. All right. Roll it. I'm going to touch his shoulder and guidance him. So, guidance does what? Guidance is a d4. Uh, how do I roll that? Slash roll 1d4. Uh, I can't do it there. Uh, In oh, the okay. chat box, just type slash roll space 1d4. Unrecognized commit. Which chat box? The one in Forge, like this. Okay. Just like that. I'll give you that four. I'll give you the four. Okay. So 25. I don't suppose anybody has here has dispel anything. I'm a monk. I don't have any spells. 
I hit things with just... my fists. Uh huh. Oh. I'm just a guy with arrows and a dog. Sounds like your country song. Before the 25 were invented. I so, gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Yep. So, Vincent, you're pulling and you're pulling and you're pulling, and it still feels like this arrow is rebar stuck in cement. What happens if I try to punch the painting? <laughs> Wish to punch the painting? Sure. All year to hit? Mm -hmm. Violence is always the answer. It may not be the right answer. It may not be the wrong answer. But it is an answer. Um, I'll just try with our brass knuckles. Nope. Eleven. You go to hit the painting. And for a moment, it almost feels like your hand is going to be stuck. But you managed to pull it away. There's definitely something wrong with this painting, guys. So, can I pick up the old man? You're welcome to try. I'm gonna pick up the old man. And what are you attempting to do with him? I'm gonna see if I can touch him to the painting. You get about halfway across the room, and he's right back where he was. I'll try it, but faster. Try it again, but faster. You get halfway across the room, and he's right back where he was. You didn't give the old man whiplash. <laughs> I'm gonna throw the old man at the painting. He is halfway across the room, and he's right back where he was. <laughs> Can I attempt to set the painting on fire with Firebolt? Look, you can't physically hurt the painting, right? But maybe we can cast a spell to hurt the painting. You go to set the painting on fire, the fire freezes. So there's just like this perpetual ball of fire now with yep. the arrow. Yep. Did I just make a fire arrow? Oh, well, it's not near the arrow, but it is on the corner of the painting. I'm going to try like... to take the painting off the wall. Like, just physically take it with my hands. It won't move. Well, so much for flipping it upside down. <laughs> I'm like fucking obsessed with this. It's great. Is, is this the stone box and the gas in that one broken building all over again? No, there's, there's something going on here, but you're going to have to figure out what. Oh, then it's going to shrug his shoulders and say, all right, let's keep going. Uh, I'm going to roll an investigation around the desk. Uh, I rolled a 22. It's just a normal desk. Alardis is going to take a deep breath in, try and calm himself. His eyes are going to go from like his normal, regular eyes to an icy blue wolf eyes, and then once he calms himself, his eyes are going to turn normal, and he's be like, okay, there's got to be something that's up with this painting that we can figure out. It's just where the hell is it? Elardis? Just... Elardis, my dear Elardis, roll me an intelligence check, please. Fourteen. Fourteen? You guys have examined every object in this room, except for two. What's in here? A desk, a pen, paper, the old man, and a painting, right? 
I did I did list though. something else when you walked into the room. Who was paying attention? That's what I'm trying to remember. Because I paid attention, but I forgot. ADHD brain strikes again. Flipping back and forth between a bedroom and a study. What else did I name did I say was in the study? Bookshelves? There you go. You know, part of me wants to sit there and be like, I set the bookshelves on fire. I'm so not what I missed? To, but it is tempting. <laughs> I so, rolled a twenty-four. Oh, sorry. Uh your cleric has set the painting on fire. The fire is frozen. Tried. I tried to set the painting on fire. Ilardis went over to investigate the desk, at which point I made him roll an intelligence check. Turns out you guys forgot about the bookshelves in this room that I listed when you came in. They did. I have. I rolled a 24 on investigation going over towards at least one of the bookshelves. Investigation of eight on the bookshelf. The bookshelf itself seems quite ordinary. Title on one of the books as you're looking. Title of the book is simply just a couple of minutes. Can I take the book and open it? And, like, the moment it? you do that, time starts to flow again in this room. The arrow thunks into the painting, the fire starts to crackle as it spreads up to the painting. The old man seems to be suddenly holding his neck like he's got severe whiplash, the pen having been dropped, and he's just looking around. Where did you come from? Where did you go? We've only got a couple of minutes. Where did you come from? Uh, death sent us, actually. Uh, uh, my friend. Thank you. Welcome to the castle of Father Time. Oh, Kronos, Are totally you makes sense. Time or... Pardon? Are you Father Time? How the hell did you get trapped in your own time bullshit? Something about a dragonborn. I don't really recall the details. <laughs> she broke time. She broke We're on my- on a mission to kill her. She broke my castle. Can we fix it? Where's the bitch and how do we kill her? You're gonna need to kill her first. Uh, if you want to attempt to do so. The only door at the end of the hall, not the entrance, the other one. You're gonna have to go through there to out how to get past whatever the fuck's in there. It's different for everybody who shows up. So... Are we all going to have to fight our own fuck, or is this a collective fuck that we have to deal with? I'm going to change the rules for just a quick second. And I'm going to make it collective. Normally, it's for each individual person. But if you're all here together, that means you work well as a team. We're we do. Time. At least when it matters. So it's going to be a collective challenge, but it's not going to be easy. And I don't know what lies beyond that door. For me, okay. the worst fear is... We'll do our best to set you free. Because you're going to kill a bitch. So anything else you guys want to ask this guy? Does he have anything that could help us kill said Dragonborn? Or any advice? Anything that could help us get out of here and win. The longer time remains frozen, the more likely everything is to fall apart. Gonna have to so do kill it. her and do it fast. Yeah. And with that, All he right. freezes again. Okay, let's go. All right, folks. Pig is going to climb on to uh, um, 
Oh my god, I forgot your name. <laughs> <laughs> a person, the mechanical squirrel. Right, mechanical squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> and then said mechanical squirrel is going to jump up on Vincent. As you guys prepare to head out, you look around. Yuki, that painting that you set on fire at this point is like half consumed. On the way out, I'm going to yell, by the way, I'm sorry about your painting. Put it somebody... out? Vincent's going to put out the painting. I can make fire. I can't necessarily put it out. How are you putting out the fire, Vincent? I was going to use like my jacket and walk at it with, the, with it. It feels almost like your jacket wants to get stuck in the painting. But All right. Well, that's going to be a problem. Let's it go. doesn't. You manage to pull it away. The fire, however, does not seem to diminish. Mm. Whoops. This is future us's problem. Let's go. Yeah, we're gonna set the whole room on fire and burn the guy to death, okay? Stuck in time anyway, it's not gonna do anything. I don't wanna risk it. Then you shouldn't set it on fire. What are you I guys- I wasn't thinking that far ahead. What are you guys doing now? Heading towards the room he told us to go. Yeah, I already opened that door. It's an empty room, so the door is just open waiting there mm -hmm. for us. Is it? Okay. Yeah, is it? Open. I never Vincent closed will go. it. Let me just rearrange a couple of things here. One second. Uh, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll be right back. Alardis is just walking out of the room and past everyone. And the only word that uh, leaves his mouth is hunting. So, you know how we have like water flasks, bottles, whatever with us, right? That they're generally always full. I'm going to take a little bit of water from that and control water, and I'm going to douse the painting and just put out the fire. The water sticks to the painting and it starts to phase back and forth between water and fire. You're yeah. good enough, I probably will burn down the entire goddamn room with the man in it, so... I like how your cleric solution is just to, like, burn the painting down. It could've worked. The first time that we ever played a tabletop RPG, um, she was playing a druid. There was a magical tree with goblins in it. Her solution as a druid keep this in mind, was to set the fucking thing on fire. I burned a magical tree down just to spite the goblin that was in it. I was, I'm playing, I was playing a damn fear in Dragon's campaign Tales of the Beast King. Of course, we're just outside the boundary of a forest that is infested with the undead and undead plants trying to take over the place, right? So my damn, fire. my damn fear kitten's response... Burn it down. Just burn it all down. No, that is the wisest decision. Instead of going in there, The entire party down. refused to do so. We're also talking about the 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 uh the undead like we're talking about like undem uh undead like yetis roaming this forest. They have no eyeballs, they're being controlled. And no eyeballs can't actually see anything. And they gave my damn fear cat, like, a beating. Burn the shit to the ground! It is undead! Anyways. What are you guys doing? Kill it, kill it with fire. Uh, at this point, I think we're just cool. waiting for Vincent to phase back in. Cool. So as we do that, we're gonna pause for a break. Then, okay. I'm gonna switch us to our BRB screen. I'm going to put up our uh, tavern music. Give me one second. Where is my tavern music? And we'll see you guys in about 15 minutes. This 
So, that begs the question, folks. Since we're back, you have talked to this old man who seems to be stuck in time. You've taken a moment. What are you guys doing now? What are you attempting to do? Uh, weren't we going to go through that door? Yeah. Yes, if I recall, we were all gathering. Well, we put out the fire on the painting, sort of. Once time starts to flow again, the flames will get doused. Hopefully. Um, if not, well, the guy will wake up and hopefully realize that his shit's on fire. Um, and as a group... We were going to enter the empty room. We're going to enter the empty room. Okay. One second, my Discord window's frozen because apparently, right, full screening doesn't. That that's not a thing with. Okay. Cool. Makes Love it, it mad. Give me one second. I have to adjust my screen here just so I have it right. And I'm listening to music. That's why I'm head bobbing. You're good. You listen to whatever music you need to listen to. So, who's first in through this door? I am riding on uh, Vincent's shoulder, so... You're riding on Vincent's shoulder. You're riding Vincent, are you? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah! (laughs) <laughs> Who? Oh, I'll go in. Okay, so Vincent and Hager are the first ones in. Who's next? I'll follow Vincent and Hig. Second. I'll go after Nico. Second. Guess I'm uh, covering, our, or covering our butts then. Okay, let me just get order in here for a second. Five. Okay, cool. Who was the last one in the door? Me, then Kiba. You, then Kiba. It's going to take me a moment to get things set up right, but as you guys walk in through the door... Second here. The giant stone room can be seen. Four walls, ceiling, there's a couple of sconces on... You're you're not going to see it yet, just give me a second, okay? Mm -hmm. There's sconces on the walls lighting up the room. It's probably about 15 to 20 feet high altogether. The moment the last one of you crosses the threshold... The door slams shut and seals you in with no other visible source of escape. Or no other mode of escape, no other entrance, exit, nothing. It's going to take me a moment here to readjust my window properly, because I now need to move into this mode and move you guys down to the bottom of the screen. And black window off the top. Nope. There we go. As the door shuts, you start to see something fade in existence. It's faint at first. And a moment later, you are faced with a room full of basilisks and chimeras. Fuck. Oh boy. I am going to... In two... Let me find my battle music here that I wanted. This one? I'm going to go ahead and we are going to roll initiative. 
Uh, once you guys roll, keep your numbers just there for a moment. I am going to ask for your initiative orders. Where is my Trello board? <laughs> Bear with me for one moment. It's not prepared. Suddenly I'm like logged out of everything. Great. Good, I gotta go pee. <laughs> You're gonna ask me to. God damn it. Uh. You're gonna send that to my old phone number. Cool. We're gonna go to that email. Oh, no. Uh, mm -hmm. better yet, I'm gonna try another way. Get a verification code at that email. One moment, folks. Sign into this account. Google needs to verify that it's you. Please verify that it's you. <laughs> um, that's where it should be. Yes, it's me trying to log in. Fuck off, TikTok. Nobody cares. <clears throat> I don't need a new pro your phone instead of a password. I don't want to do that because I don't trust new programs as soon as or new initiatives as soon as they come out, especially not from companies like Google. No. Oh. Oh. Second. Signing in. A link will be sent. Google needs time to verify that it's you making this request. If you don't see the email after 24 hours, check your spam. I did, ya dink weasel. Swear to God. <clears throat> Come on. Come on. Wait, wrong one. Wrong one. I think I might have lost my Trello account. This isn't good. Uh-oh. I just verified that it was my account! Sorry, technical issues. Bear with me. Points. Yes, it's me trying to sign in. <laughs> okay, I'm back into the proper email account. Now. Okay, I'll be right back. Yep. Log in with Google. This account. Problem solved. Huzzah. Yay. I bought your tea party board. This is how I'm tracking initiative because I'm classy like that. All right, uh, Vincent, what was your initiative? Vincent? Cool. 17. 17, thank you. Uh, Hello? 
start is. What was your initiative? Uh, my initiative was 10. Excellent. Thank you. Yuki, what was your initiative? Also 10, but his dex is higher. His dex is higher, so Ilardis goes before Yuki. Eva, what was your initiative? <clears throat> uh, double checking on that. I rolled a 19 for him, so I gotta add mods for that. Okay. 21. Excellent. Love it. Thank you. Nico, what was your initiative? If you're back yet. Cool. Uh, Hig, what was your initiative? 11 for me. Yep. And 9 for Surly the Iron Squirrel. For who? <laughs> My clockwork squirrel. Yeah. Surly the, Surly the Surly. Iron Squirrel? Yeah. Cool. Eva got the zoomies. And you said that was 9? Yes. I love it. <clears throat> I need to quickly roll for these guys. One second. As I drop everything all over the place. We're waiting for uh, Nico to get back anyways, so... Hey, let me double check my stats on these guys for a second. Guys is initiative at. And that one, she too is poor Graham he keeps blending into the background. Oh. <laughs> uh, what do you think? All right, all right. these guys. In the shirt he goes. That that just looks so wrong. Is that your human? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it's grim. It, serious? Okay. It's gonna be Grim Grim. Get that. Awesome. Uh, it, so uh, it looks like Nico in the chat got an 18. All right, let's organize these. This goes here. This goes here. Two right order. This goes here. That goes there. This goes here. Uh, Surly, what is your dex? Your dex mod. Hold on, I gotta flip on. Yep. Dex mod is two. Dex mod is two. Surly goes first. Alright. Oh, yeah. Not back yet. Awesome. First up is Kiba. Okay. Uh. Kiba is going to because he's like six foot on all fours he's going to trot over uh Hig with no issues and go after uh the one red enemy right there right. which one that one okay so I can actually see your curses floating around, which means all you have to do is hold your cursor over the one all, all over where you're trying to uh, 
go, right? Okay, so, what are you attempting to do with these guys? And now that Kiba's... Now that Kiba's right there, uh, he is going to attack with a bite. Okay, do it up. Uh, it's going to be a 12. That will miss, unfortunately. Uh, Kiba kind of pulls up a little short. <clears throat> That's it for Pupper. In one moment. I'm dumb. I keep forgetting about the Beastmaster bonus. You need uh, to... the companion gains an uh, the companion gains an additional bonus to attack and damage rolls equal to the ranger's proficiency bonus. And for you, the... and for you, that bumps that up to uh, normally uh, not in. Er... Uh, I don't think it's included in the attack descriptions below. So I'd be... I don't think that would work then. Or would it? I think? Pretty sure. Uh, otherwise, it'd be uh, plus 8 on that 7. Uh, bumping it up from 12 to uh, 15. 15? Second. Check. So as Kiba walks up to the era, attempts to take a chunk out of it, a 15 will hit. Nine points of piercing damage, and it, or my uh, target needs to try and succeed on a DC 13 strength saving throw or be knocked prone. Strength saving throw? Yep, got to be to 13. 13. Off the table. That is a fail. That is knocked prone. One moment, please. Knocked prone. Okay. So Kiba's basically just like got this thing pinned and his jaws locked on it. Yep. Hey, look at that. Nico's back. Guess what? Sorry. Hi. You rolled an 18 for initiative, yes? Yes. Good. Guess what? Huh. Okay. It's your go. Okay. Um, I'm going to move over to this guy here. And move over to that basilisk, okay? Yeah. And oh, I'm gonna hit him with my quarter staff. All right, hit her up. First one's a thirteen. That will miss. Okay. Second one is a twenty-five. That will hit. Um, seven damage. Seven damage. One moment. Okay. Um, you know what? I'll save my flurry of blows for later. I'll end my turn there. Yep. Okay. After Nico comes Vincent. All right. I am going 
Smooth. There, 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 and here. You gonna put yourself between those two? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and. I'm going to which like uh which ones are the chimeras? Chimeras are the ones in red. Okay. So I'm gonna look at the one in red. And I'm actually going to lift my bat to strike at it, but I'm going to say see something intelligent if you don't want me to hit you. That is a Chimera. Second. It can't actually say anything until its turn, so you can either continue to hit it or you can do whatever else and or end your turn now. Uh, I will hold my attack. You will hold your attack. Okay, moving on. It is now the Chimeras go. Uh, the one in front of Kiba is knocked prone. Uh, so I don't believe... Uh, actually, getting back up from Kiba's knocked prone uh, is the strength struggle? The strength check? Uh, I think that's only if Kiba's actually holding it down. Which he is, I believe. Uh, technically, Kiba knocked it down I was just doing the whole pinning it down for flavor. Oh, well, pinning it down would attempt... You did knock it prone, which means Kiba had the upper hand, which means Kiba could uh, pin it down. And if Kiba's pinning it down, that means it has to escape, which I believe is a strength contest, yes? Well, oh, I believe the other thing now. is... Go ahead. I think the other thing is that Kiba would have had to have initiated a grapple. Okay. So, getting back up is half of its movement, which it will do. And it is going to attempt to gore Kiva with its horns. So, its horns is going to be a 20 to hit. That definitely hits. For 11 points of bludgeoning damage, it takes a swing with its claws. For 22 points of damage. Or, sorry, for 22 to hit. That hits too. Uh, that is 12 points of damage. Uh, one second. And it also gets a bite attack. For 20. Yep, that hits. For 13 points. This one moves down. This one moves over to Bard. And this one moves over towards Nico. The ones on either side of Bard are going to attempt to take a swing. So uh, the one on the left side is going to hit at an 18. Uh, no. Okay. The wind lock it. Uh, next one is a 19, and for that one, the next one is a 17. That's not... Or 18, sorry. that's Those aren't going to hit. The one in front of you... No, no, hit. The one in front of you will hit at... One second. It's going to be a 13. That one's going to be a 21. That one will hit. Okay, so that was the horns, and the other one will not hit. So the horn hits... For 10 points of damage as it attempts to gore you. That's bludgeoning damage. Yeah, so because I'll... I'm tech just quick question, because I'm on Vincent's shoulders, does that affect me in any way? You would have if you hadn't hopped down, you would have moved. Um right now it's aiming for Vincent. I didn't realize you were on my shoulders still. I thought you had gotten off. The one oh, the Chimera I never said so, so. The, 
can you... Had I known, I wouldn't have put myself in this position. We'll say I hopped off. Cool. <laughs> okay, I'll move you back. You got it? I think so, yeah. Okay. The one <laughs> to the right of Nico is going to take a swing for 12. Um, hold on. Versus, versus your AC. No. Okay. It's going to gore with its horns for an 11. Nope. And it's going to attempt to take a bite for 15. Yeah, uh, that is my armor. That goes to the attacker. Okay. That attacks for 14 points of damage. Okay. That is it for the Chimeras. Next up, Egg. Well said. So the one that's closest to us? Yep. That one? Yep. Is getting shot. Cut. Does a 15 hit? It's AC. That will hit. So that is a total damage of 21. 13 piercing, 8 sneak attack. Moment. I sucky at math today. Just today? Listen here, you. Anything else? Reload. Uh, Vincent, you said you were holding your action, yes? Yeah. Was, yeah. Okay. So once we're done with it, we'll hop back to you for a sec. Sorry about that. No problem. You're going to reload? Okay. So I yeah. believe reloading is going to take your movement for your next turn. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to hop back to Vincent for a quick sec. Mm -hmm. And this is actually going to put you... Uh, I believe after the, you know what? We'll keep you right where you were because that was before the. All right. I mean, I'm going to say I never know when it's uh, going to be a smarty thinky challenge or a flashy smashy challenge, and then I attack the, okay. then I rage, and I attack the Camara in front of me. Okay. Uh, Blade short sword. That is a total of 27 damage. How much to uh, hit? That is. Oh, uh, that is 17. Uh, it's been so long, I can't remember what all my bonuses come from from rage. Give me a second. Yep, uh, you're good. Seventeen to hit. Seventeen to hit. Yeah, that will hit. All right. Uh, it's not giving me. Oh, there it is. Uh, that is. Wait. It's not doing the breakdown of damage that I'm used to here. Uh, oh, there it is. So radiant is nine damage. Uh, oh, no, that's because that, wait, wait, what? Come on, you got this. You can do it. I believe in you. Only one belief, though. Can't have the other one. All right, so that was the attack then. So, did that roll damage as well? Yes, it did. Total one handed, total two handed, though it's in the Sunblade shirt, so that's that would be one handed damage then. So. Okay, so. Nine radiant damage, ten uh, slashing damage. Nine radiant damage, ten slashing damage to the one in front of you? Yes. Wait one second. Okay. 
And then I will attack with Denzel. That is a 25 to hit. 25 to hit. Yes. That will hit. All right. Uh, that is one plus I like how it's not adding in any of my bonuses hmm. because per uh, what is it uh proficiency gets added to damage correct uh one second. No, it'll tell you what your your character sheet should tell you what your weapon does for damage. Your proficiency yeah, gets added it, into your to hit. Yeah, all it's saying is uh one is one d twelve, and it's rolling a one and not adding any bonuses. So okay, I so, can't remember what all bonuses are added to, to other than hold on a second. strength is the only one. Okay, so it's rolling one d twelve. Yeah. Uh, second. You're hitting with your baseball bat. Yeah. So okay. it should also be getting when a d6 for lightning damage, but I'll roll that separate. I'll take. Let me let me go take a look at your bat. Second. You're still using D and D Beyond, yeah. Yeah. Logging in. Pain. Diamond coated baseball bat gives you one D so it does one D twelve of that should be bludgeoning on slashing damage, but it does one D twelve of uh bludgeoning damage. Remember what we gave you for lightning? I'm pretty sure it was a D6. Okay, so you know what? We'll count it as that for now. Alright. Uh, but I'm not. Because it was. God, it's been a while. So I know I had my strength bonus, that's the plus four. So, uh, so for your damage, so for your to hit, it's your d20 roll plus your strength plus your proficiency. For your bat, it's uh, for the damage, it's your d your dice roll plus whatever any other modifiers you have, such as lightning damage or any other elemental damage you might have. Or any other damage you might get uh, as aligned by the rules for rage, or as outlined by the rules for rage. Yeah, I know, but I'm being told different things here because it says... When I make a melee weapon attack using strength, I gain a bonus damage to the damage roll that increases as the as you gain level as a barbarian, as shown in the rage column of the barbarian table. Where are you seeing so, this? Or, when I click on rage in my actions ability in in my character sheet. Okay, so in battle, you fight with primar primal ferocity. On your turn, you can enter rage as a bonus action. While raging, you gain the following benefits if you aren't wearing heavy armor. You have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. When you make a melee weapon attack using strength, you gain a bonus to damage roll that increases as you gain levels as, barbar uh, as a barbarian as shown in the rage damage column of the barbarian table. Okay, give me one second. Let me pull up ruling. Right. Uh, Barbarian Rage in 5e explained. Nope, that's not the source I want. Fuck off. What level are you? What level are you? We should all be at level 10. Yeah. 10. That's a plus 3. Okay. Okay. So, alright, so... Okay, so it was that. Uh, 
inventory action here. There you go, 1d6, oh, 1d12. If, if you look under Rage, the description itself, uh, under All, you gain advantage on strength checks and saving throws, plus three melee damage with strength weapons. It says it right there. So yeah, it's going to be a plus three. So your dice roll, plus your three, plus any other elemental eight. damage you have. So that is eight, and then uh, another d6 for the... Uh, okay, do damage. it up. That is three lightning damage. So 11 altogether? Yeah, that is on the chimera I attacked with the first attack. Yep. Okay. All right. So now, uh, where is it? Sorry about that, guys. I don't want that. Yeah, no kidding. I, <laughs> sorry about that. No, you're good. You're good, okay? It has been a while since we've sat down to play. Yep. Where are we? Uh, there it is. I am going to use extra attack. Yep. So that I can make another attack action. Yep. Does attack twice whenever I take attack action. So I think that only gets me a third attack rather than a full attack action. So okay. I am going to do it again with Denzel. Okay. One, one. That is a 24 to hit. That'll hit. Well, for bludgeoning damage. Okay. And another three lightning damage. Okay. And since I raged this turn, I cannot use my lightning attack. So that is my attack for me. That is your turn? Yeah. Cool. Uh, after Vincent Ka Sahig's done, we move on to Alardis. Sorry about that, guys. You're good. It's fine. It's all part of the game. Alardis, you're up. Okay, so seeing everything going down and seeing Cuba get incredibly hurt, um, as soon as Alardis blinks, then his eyes go from regular to wolf, and he starts <laughs> he starts to grow. And like you can hear like the bones cracking and uh, tendons popping as his form starts to physically change. And in the place of your elven ranger stands still in the armor of said elven ranger is a blue werewolf with black tiger, tiger stripes going through it, mm -hmm. or through the fur. And as soon as the transformation ends, Alardis lets out a guttural howl, and then uh, as a bonus action, um, I'm going to apply a blood curse of bloated agony on the chimera that hit uh, Kiba. So, uh, for the duration, uh, the creature has disadvantage on strength and dex checks and takes 1d8 necrotic damage if it makes more than one attack on its turn. Nice. Hey, you're gonna have to remind me of that? No worries. Okay. And then, uh, after that, um, Alardis is going to extend his claws, go full tilt at this chimera, and he's going to be like, DIE! And oh just start, sorry, and uh, just start 
ripping at this chimera with his claws. So I'm going to have to check the rules on your transformation, specifically how long it takes to do that. Give me one second. Should be instant. instant. Okay, if it's an instant thing, then that shouldn't be a problem. Just bear with me for one moment. We haven't actually added that into your character sheet yet, have we? Oh, everything's there. Okay. Um... Alright. Critter knows what's up and she's here for this. Yup. Mm -hmm. Uh. Oh. <clears throat> Yes, my evil plan plan is coming together. You know, we'll just count it as an instant for now. Go, f go for it. Gotta find it first because this is my first time ever doing this. You're good. Happy hunting. Doing it on purpose, Bingley. I gotta find it the necrotic damage thingy. Okay. Uh, so it's gonna be. Um, or I'm gonna do. Two predatory strikes. Okay. Uh, Dex. Alright, so... What happens for that? It's basically just, um... Unarmed strikes, but they're, uh... Slashing, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, Glitch, that is a complicated answer. <laughs> He's playing, um... Well, he was playing a ranger uh, sorcerer, if I'm not mistaken. Ranger wizard. Ranger wizard, and then he got... Warlock. Warlock, sorry, sorry. Warlock. Ranger warlock, and then got infected with lycanthropy, and ended up taking blood hunter. <laughs> he's basically nice. combina He's basically really fucked up at the moment. Just like me. Aw, poor baby. I'd apologize, but this is too fun. And it's about to get better because I just on the first attack, um, I swung at it for a uh, twenty-six to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> Boom. So let's do damage for that first. Sure thing. Uh, nine points of slashing damage. Well, I can blood hunter transformation is instant if those rules are being followed. Uh, yeah, kind for the most part, yeah. So nine points. Uh, second one I think is probably going to miss with uh, nine. Yeah, that is going to miss, unfortunately. Yeah, he kind of pissed off his god too. <laughs> it's great. Mm. Uh, well, his his patron. Um, what else you got? Unfortunately, unfortunately, that's uh, it for me. Other than as a uh, free action, you're just gonna look at this chimera and just roar in its face. Yuki, you're up. I fear for Nico's safety, so I am going to make an attempt to set this one mm -hmm. on fire. Okay. How? Firebolt. Uh. Okay. 17 to hit. 17 for that. One second. Will, uh, 17 will hit. Then it does 6 damage. It. Anything else? It's not fire resistant, right? Uh, let me double check. Doesn't look like it. Cool! Uh, Madam Glitch, I who are you giving the hit harder to? For the firebolt person. Neppy, one... Okay, what do I do for Hit Harder? One moment, I'm grabbing that info for you. I really should have this just all written out, but I don't, because I'm a lazy fuck. 
Uh, this guy. We've only just started this this campaign, so yeah, I get it. We you've been playing this campaign for a while. <laughs> uh, you get an extra D4 damage. Uh, it's just roll d4. Right? Roll a d4. Yep. An extra three. An extra three. Done. I do nine damage to that thing. There you go. The gods have smiled on you today. Anything else? Thank you, God uh, Glitch. Anything else? <laughs> nah, that's it for now. Surly, you're up. And Surly will do a lightning bolt attack. On? The one that we shot. Okay. That oh. one right there. I'm going to go ahead and add just a random icon for Surly for a second. Second. That's a... Hey, Matt. I'm not sure if that worked properly. Missions. You own that token. Cool. Lightning damage. So, what did you what did you hit with? I think ten, but I'm not sure if I pressed the right button or not. Okay, so roll it again. Give you another go. Fifteen. Fifteen to hit. What was your damage? I gotta roll separately for damage. Okay. Five. Five? Yes. Five lightning damage. One moment. Counted for. Can you move Surly? Just move it up. Just move Surly up like a square if you can, and then back. It's the the uh, white the white one by you. You know I'm gonna mark this oh, as. Oh okay. Second, I'm gonna actually mark that as. But yes, I can move it. So I know there it is. I'm gonna t I'm gonna tint Surly blue for you. At least I should be able to. It's not what I want. I think there's a picture of him somewhere. Settings. There you go. Surly has been tinted blue. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Anything else from you? I think we can do one more. Yeah, no, we're going to leave it at that. Okay. Uh, basilisks are up. The one in front, uh, the one behind Vincent is going to attempt to actually bite. One moment. Okay, that happened. The nine points of edge. Second plus points of poisoning damage. As it bites its own tongue. Uh. The one in front of Nico is going to attempt to hit. Mm -hmm. And that is going... Actually, you know what? Yeah, that's going to hit at a... 21. Yes, that definitely hits. 
That is going to be... Nine points of damage. Plus four points of poisoning damage. Double check its poison here for a second. Can you say that one more time? Uh, nine points of regular damage. Mm -hmm. And... Um, four point, uh, sorry, four points of poison damage. Okay, thank you. This one's moving down. These have a range of... Okay. Here. There. That is moving there. And we are now coming to top of the order with Kiba. Will you figure that out? Give me one sec. I will be right back. Sorry, I had to go, kid. Did something. Sorry about that. Kiba, you're up. Uh, Kiba, you're up. Okay, um... Kiba is just going to make another bite attack. Okay. The one in front of him? Yep. Done. Hitting four. Eighteen to hit. Eighteen to hit. That yep. will hit. Seven points of piercing damage, and the target must succeed on a DC thirteen strength saving throw. Okay, say that once more. Uh, target must. Succeed on a DC 13 saving throw or be knocked pro. Okay, and how much damage? Uh, that was. That's seven. Okay, done. And strength, it makes that saving throw. That is it for me. Nico! Um. I can do. Pardon? Hit him, with, hit him with my quarter staff. Using your quarter staff. Fifteen. How much? Fifteen. Fifteen? He's that ties. Uh, you're hitting the red or the white one? Uh, the white one. Bas uh, the basilisk. Mm -hmm. Second. Fifteen ties. That will actually. That goes to the attacker. That's uh, five damage. Ouch. Damage sucked. Hitting them again. 24. That'll hit. That's a nine on that. The nine, nine damage? Yeah. Done. And then Floria blows to the red one. 
Flurry of blows to the red one. Please unleash your flurry of blows. 19. That'll hit. Wow. Three. <laughs> Three? And Done. then the second one... 14. 14? Yeah. That will hit. Okay. Five. Five? Yep. Second. Hit. Calculated. Anything else? And then... Fun. I would like to try to stunning strike the red one. Okay. Roll to hit. Uh, roll your to hit. Um, you it's you need to you need to roll right. me a con saving throw. Right. DC okay. Fifteen. Fifteen. Mm-hmm. It misses. Uh, so you you are successful. Okay. Then it is stunned. It is stunned. Awesome. Let me adjust its token so I know that it is stunned. Where's that little swirly thing? Stunned. So Thank it does you. not get it does not get a turn next round. It does not get a turn next round. Right? Cool. Anything else? Nope. We're gonna go with Vincent, who is currently surrounded. Yeah. Well, on two sides. Or three sides rather. So I am going to Spread the damage around, and I will attack this one on my left. Yep. And dark breath with the sunblade. Yep. I don't know why it does that. Something's weird with how it's rolling the damage from my sunblade. Roll it manually. Yeah. You bring that up so I know all I'm doing. Alright, so I have a plus two on it. And it gets my advantage and my strength and my position to be hard so pardon for the for the attack roll get my strength my proficiency and a plus two from the weapon itself if the weapon gives you a plus two but uh if you're raging your oh wait, that's for your damage never mind so yeah your strength yeah. your d20 plus your strength plus your proficiency and any bonus the weapon gives you so. Or your D20. Yep. What are you doing? Got a 23 to hit. 23? That'll fucking hit. And now it's damage. I don't know why it seems so weird with the attack. Like damage. That is eleven damage. Uh, six radiant damage. Eleven plus Eight. six. Sunblade. Oh no, it says it right here. Uh, eight radiant and wait, radiant. Eight radiant plus. I think I was reading my damage wrong the first time. What? What's going on here? What does the actual description say for the damage? Luminous blade lights in a 15 foot radius. The 15 is not gain 20 feet. Take connection when you hit an undead with it. Take one of the damage 1d6 plus 1d8 radiant or 1d8 plus six for damage. 1d8 plus six. You rolled max plus six, so that is 14 altogether. Okay, 
Sorry, I, I, you're good. For some reason, my brain isn't able to put things together today. <laughs> you're good. Don't worry about it. All you right. know, it's been an off day for a lot of people. I'm not all that worried about it. We're just gonna roll with the punches. Uh, all right. Uh, next attack with Denzel. Yep. Which one? Uh, the same one that I attacked the first time. Okay. So the one right to my left. Yep. That is 19 to hit. That'll hit. And... Uh, I'm actually going to use... What is that ability? Just so I know. You gonna re-roll? Savage Attacker? Uh, I think uh, the one that allows you to re-roll, right? Yes, one per re-roll weapon damage. Yes, should be your savage attacker. Correct. Okay. And you can re-roll your damage. That's less better. Okay, so twelve. Uh, plus it was. So that is four. For uh. Bludgeoning? Yep. I think. Oh, bludgeoning. And then... Oh, wait. It is... Shit, is it slash roll? Slash roll. And three lightning. Uh, storm aura? Your storm aura ability? Yep. Okay. That is a saving throw on their end. Mm. Uh... Uh, the DC is that Dex? Uh, yes, give me one second. Uh, I'm pretty sure they fail. So 17th uh, for the save. Yeah, they, they, they fail. And that is... On a 2d6, that is 3 damage. 2d6, that is 3 damage? Yep. Was that for Storm? That was for Storm Aura. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one second. Okay. Calculated. Oops. Cool. Um, I'm going to use extra attack to smack it with uh, Dindel again. Do it up. Twenty-one to hit. That'll hit. Thirteen damage. Thirteen? Yep. And, oh, right. Uh, and four lightning. Okay. Anything else? That is my turn. That is your turn. Moving from Vincent to the Chimeras. This <clears throat> one moves over. I'm going to position them first, and then we're going to get off with attacks. We're going to move with attacks. Vincent can take a free uh, free hit off of the one that just moved. All right. Twenty-five to hit. Yeah, roll your damage. That is six slashing, or six bludgeoning and one lightning. So six bludgeoning, one lightning for seven altogether. Okay. As they move into position, each one of them starts to issue forth fire from its mouth. Nico, Vincent, Ilardis, Kiba. And Yuki. Uh, no, nope, and Hig as well. Need to make me dexterity saving throws. And you need to beat a 15. Okay. Oh, boy. Yep, that's 
I will ask in a moment what your totals were. Give me one second. Nico is my most dexterous character. You said dexterity saving throws, right? Yep. Oh, my bad. I hit the wrong thing. And we're going to have to do these one at a time, so. Yuki. Three. And Yuki gets hit. Kiba. Uh, that was, uh, 18. Kiba makes it. Hilardis. Uh, I ended up getting, uh, 22. Hilardis makes it. Uh, Vincent. 18. Vincent makes it. Nico. 24. Nico makes it. Hig. 3, but I'm going to check something really quickly. Hold yep. on. So. Gonna wait for Hig here for a second. You know what? We can go with... Nope, never mind. I can't do it. We're gonna start with Nico. You succeeded. Mm -hmm. In a second. Nico, you take 13 points of damage. Okay. Uh, fire damage. Vincent, you succeeded? Yep. You take 13 points of fire damage. Yep. All right. Ilardis, you succeeded? Yep. Second. <clears throat> you take 12 points of fire damage. Eva, you succeeded? Kiba takes 16 points of fire damage. Hey, you failed? Apparently. And it looks like I am not immune to fire. You take 26 points of fire damage. Yuki. You failed? Yeah. One moment, please. You take 35 points of fire damage. As they all let loose with a rather ferocious attack of fire breath on all of you. We move down to Hig. Quick question. How big are these guys? Chimeras? Yeah. Do they fit in a five by five cube space? These guys are large. They are ten feet. They're they so they'd fit in a ten foot space, not five. Well, shit. In that case, hold on. I'm doing a little math in my head. Sorry. You're good.
All right. Um, you know what? We're just gonna keep putting lead in it. Yep. Never mind. Uh, so I was aiming for the one that I've been continuously yep. aiming for. Uh, I'm assuming eleven does not hit. Eleven will not hit. Okay, in that case. I believe I can use a cantrip. Uh, you've had, uh, if, it, if it's a cantrip that can be triggered during a bonus action or you have a second attack that will allow for spells, you can use it as, you can use a cantrip. If not, you'll have to wait until your next round. Mm. I could technically use it as a cunning action, but you know what? I'm going to hold on to it. Yep. So I'm done. Uh, so moving on after Hig. Pilardus. Uh, he's dealing with the kids' supper. Give me a quick second, I'll call for him. Okay. And folks. Wait, I am here for a moment. Yep. Okay. Um This is going to be a new thing. Okay. Um so I'm going to use my bonus action and I am going to invoke my crimson right. That does uh, I imbue a weapon strike, which is ten to what my predatory strikes are. Yep. Um, for one d four extra damage of my chosen type. Okay. On activating the right, I take one d four damage. Uh, right damage is magical and lasts while I hold the weapon or until I complete a short slash long rest. Okay. And unless somebody tries to sever my hands off, I'm not dropping this anytime soon. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and sever in the front. You're going to go ahead and what? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Dumb joke. Okay. So I'm going to take three points of damage. Yep. Uh, Nico, hey, actually, hold on a second. Drive. Nico, you wouldn't have taken that damage because the one that hit you uh, cannot move. My mistake. Oh, right. Yeah. So, yeah, you can take that damage back. Sorry, go ahead, Alardis. How much damage was that again? It's like... Second. Like, like 13? Um, so the one that has been going after Kiba, yep. I'm going to rip this thing to shreds. Do it up. Uh, am I <laughs> flanking with Kiba? Or... No, you're not. And what would it have taken for necrotic damage? Did it do uh, an extra attack after? Or just oh, no, just one? did the one. Okay. Just, sorry, just checking. So you're going to go after the one that's been hitting Kiba? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, that is going to be... <laughs> 14. Hit. Yep. That will tie that goes to the attacker. I'm going to do damage for that first. Oops. Too many dice. Too many dice. There we go. 
Uh, that's going to be four slashing damage and three cold damage. Four slashing, three cold. Okay. And then I'm going to do my extra attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one is going to be a 19 to hit. 19 to hit. That'll hit. Uh, four slashing and two cold. Uh, four slashing, two cold for a total of six. Okay. Anything else? Uh, nope, that's it. Cool. After Lardis comes Yuki. One, sir. Mm-hmm. One moment, folks. Of course, I found what I was looking for now. I do have a reflex spell. Okay, so <laughs> if you you have a reflex spell? <laughs> yeah. Is, oh, can well, it be used as time. a reaction or... Oh, it's it's used as it says it's used as a reflex, or that you can use it as a reflex. Let me take a look at your character sheet here. Do where are you? Oh, it's under reaction. Well, if, if it's under if it's under the reaction tab, then it counts as a reaction. Okay. Uh, which one were you looking at? Shield. That's, you're probably in the second tab. Back. It's not a big deal. You know, you learn. That's also a first level spell. If it was a cantrip, I would have given it to you, but it's a first level spell, so. Yeah, no, no worries. It's okay. Yeah. Like I said, but you know for next time. Yuki. Uh, the thing in front of me is a basilisk, right? The thing in front of you is a chimera. Oh, how tall is it? Basically, like, can I see Kiba around this thing? It is a large creature, so it will not fit in a five foot by five foot square. Technically, it should actually be. 10 foot by 10 foot. You know, 10 foot by 10 foot square. It's fairly big. Uh, you can... I figure out how I can do this without uh, triggering a reaction from it. If I go there, I still wouldn't be able to see past it, would I? You go where? I moved over a corner. I could step these. Where, hold your cursor over the spot you're trying to go. Okay, I moved here where where you are. Yep. I'm trying to see over here. It's going to be troublesome to see around that. Crap. Well... Since I can't reach Kiba without pissing this thing off, I can't see around this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to cure wounds myself. Hey, uh, real quick, wouldn't she be able to see under it? So, here's the thing. Kamir is a vile combination of a goat, lion, and dragon. It features heads of all three creatures. Uh, it can fly, um, and it does use four legs. So you might catch a glimpse, but it would still be cumbersome. Correct. Plus, okay. I'm like seven feet tall, so. Oh, right. I thought you were tiny. <laughs> no, I could so. probably do it, but. Not I can't see under this thing, and I'd probably struggle to see over this thing. So, yeah, I'm just going to cure wounds myself since I can't do fuck all for Kiba right now. Yeah, right now it's literally just like in your way. Oh, 
that's bullshit. I only get 10 points back. Only? It's only 10 points when I took, like, what, 20-something? Anyways, anything else? <clears throat> Let me check my bonuses. Mm-hmm. spiritual weapon because fuck these things. You can do that as a bonus? As a bonus? I can spiritual weapon. Cool. Do it up. So you summon it and I believe your spiritual weapon actually takes, uh, it can hit next turn. Yeah, I was hoping it'd pop the, like, info box like it used to, but no. Nope. So I'm gonna pop that thing, like, here. One moment. Uh, give me one second. And for a price, you know, that tax You're not going to let me just, like, toss that there in that box? Son of a bitch. Okay, um... Ignore any stats for this. Whoa, that is not what I wanted. Ignore any stats for this. I'm going to color this so you know it's your spiritual weapon. We're gonna make this kind of a yellowish green. There you go. And I will give you control over that icon. There you go. Second. Let's see here. Is it? One missions owned by. Can you move that? Yep. Cool. That is now your spiritual weapon. When you want it, when it disappears off the map, you let me know. Okay. Anything else? No, nope, that's it. Moving down to Surly the Iron Squirrel. We're gonna do lightning bolt kick in. Oh, I um, don't think it will hit. Real quick. What? When I cast it, I can make a melee spell attack against the creature within five feet. Oh, uh, go ahead, roll your attack, and your six will not hit. Uh, actually, with the, I didn't, I, would, I hadn't looked at the map. I think the spiritual weapon would be in the way. There, no. Okay. Because you're attacking from Surly. Oh, yeah, okay, never mind. So, no, and your six will not hit. Okay. I figured. <laughs> Nephi, roll your attack. Uh, 12 does not hit, does it? Nope. Uh, back to Surly. Anything else from Surly? Uh, nope. He is just standing guard. Nico, please make an attack of opportunity as one of the basilisks moves out of your threat range. Sure. Oh, I was like, where did it go? <laughs> Couldn't find it. Um, 22. That'll hit. Please roll your damage. 11. And you can make one more attack of opportunity as another one moves. Funny. That'll hit. Please roll your damage. Oh, wait. No, sorry. You only get one attack of opportunity, don't you? Yeah. Oh, that's okay, right. Never mind on the second one. My yep, bad. Ignore it. Uh, the one in front of Hig. Which 
You need to make me a DC 12 constitution saving throw, please. Five. Five? Yes. Okay. So. At the end of your next turn, you need to make a constitution saving throw as your body starts to stiffen. And you're finding it a little bit hard to move. What specifically are you using? Petrifying Gaze. Okay. Nico, please make me a constitution saving throw. Constitution. Yep. Twelve. At the end of your next turn, you are going to need to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. As you are starting to find your body a little bit stiff. One moment, please. Let's see here. Is it? Where the fuck did they put it? You know what? I'm just gonna use... Not restrained. Right, give me one second. I'm looking for the icon. Gonna add is a marked you <clears throat> Vincent One of the basilisks yep. the basilisks that uh, just down below mm -hmm. is attempting to hit because it is flanking, I believe it gets advantage on that attack. That is going to be a 19 to hit. That's the market. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. Um. Kiba. Sorry. Words. Hard. Uh, Kiba. This one is flanking it's with in you. The kitchen making okay. Well, this one's still going to attempt to hit. Will a 19 hit? When he gets back. Uh, matches. Matches? That goes to the attacker. That does 14 points of damage. And 6 points of poison damage. I will calculate. Give me one second. Oh, you got it. Cool. That brings us to top of the turn order, where, folks, we are going to hold session for t Okay. Because we are getting close okay. to that cutoff time. Uh, Hig and Nico will both need to make notes that they are starting the process of being petrified. Mm -hmm. We have a spiritual weapon on the board. I'm going to put it, like, as petrified, just so that way I remember what yeah, it is. Yeah, I wasn't able to see that. Give me one second. What is that marker? I found it under conditions on my... in my uh, character sheet. Okay, that's why I couldn't see it. So, Nico, if you want to mark that as well, I will take the um, icon that I was using for you off. Where is it? Where do I put it's it? Under your conditions. So, oh, so conditions. on your character sheet. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, petrified? Petrified. Yeah. Okay. Yep, right under it. paralyzed. With Nico and Higgs starting to turn to stone, they're going to need to make a constitution saving throw at the end of their next turn. 
uh, Kiba seems to be on the verge death door. With a werewolf currently ravagely, savagely attacking one of the Chimeras. And your cleric in a corner, huddling behind a spiritual weapon. We are going to pause for today. We're going to pick it up again in two weeks. We'll see how you guys fare at the conclusion of this battle. For our audience, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate that you have been here and that you have joined us for this battle. Hope that you have enjoyed at least somewhat uh, a bit of this. And we'll, we'll see you again in two weeks. 